Money bought my happiness. Really? It did. I'm happy right now. That's it. You won. I won. So what comes after? Drugs and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> a business generally starts with an idea. But turning that idea into something real, that's the challenge. My name is Baratunde Thurston. Join me as I help share the story of the new face of business around the country. Welcome to Funding. Action. We're in a back room in a doctor's office in Inglewood, where Issa Rae, creator of Awkward Black Girl, is overseeing some blocking of a scene of her brother's show. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how your whole web series comedy started. I wrote a comedy series called Dorm Diaries about what it was like to be black at Stanford, okay. and that just started everything. It was After college, Issa moved to LA and began writing, producing, and starring in what would become a hit web series, The Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl. So you say, you know, with Awkward Black Girl, like you didn't even try initially to get it in sort of the front door of the entertainment industry? No, the feedback that I was getting, the things to change, the things, make it whiter, make it, you know, more open, you know, things like that, just code for, take the black people out. I was just like, you know what, let me just do my own thing. Yeah. I felt like I, I had a grasp with my audience and I had an idea of who they were. I mm -hmm. could cater to them and listen to them because they could actively tell me what they wanted to see. You know, with the an analytics of YouTube, especially, you can see like what their favorite parts are, yeah. when they're fast forwarding, when they're, when, when they're falling off. So you so. use that info in terms of the creative? All the time. So how did you pay for all of it? I invested in the camera early on via credit card, so I was heavily in debt. Yep. I had great friends who did favors for me. I only did stuff that I knew would be free, and I only wrote yeah. locations that were inexpensive that I had access to, mm, okay. so it was a matter of that. So you chose like a budget-friendly path. Always. To get it done. Think back to those early days. What was a, a very desperate situation? When I got representation, when I got like signed to an agency and management, I was like, oh, this is it. You know, I am here. Yeah. And so I quit my job. I was like, bye, bitches. <laughs> and then I was broke because I didn't save any money. Yeah. And so it got to a point where I, you know, I couldn't afford a cup of coffee. So that was really a low point. I was yeah. like, I'm getting an audience, but what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Our cinematographer at the time was like, you guys, look, you're averaging around 60,000 viewers per episode. If half of those people gave a dollar, you'd have $30,000 to continue the season. We were like, okay, let's just, let's try this site Kickstarter. Because people have been recommending it and people had been actively saying, Hey, how can I give money to your show? I can tell you need it. In 2013, it is increasingly common for celebrity entertainers to turn to crowdfunding. But Issa Rae was one of the pioneers, launching her campaign in the summer of 2011. She set a goal of 30,000 and nearly doubled it. The $57,000 improved the production quality of her show and grew her audience to increase the visibility of her work. The series blew up after the campaign. I would definitely attribute the success of the series and the attention that the series got to us doubling our Kickstarter goals. Like, we got covered in so many publications after that because people were aware. We proved YouTube as a, a viable medium for content creators yeah. and Kickstarter as a platform to fund art. That was a huge deal, and, and the press took it and ran with it, and people who wouldn't have heard about the series before heard about it because yeah. of this money that we raised. So there's one viewer in particular I'm interested in asking about, Pharrell Williams. Woo! I'm by myself at home, and he calls me, and he's gushing about how much he loves the series, how he can relate because he's an awkward black guy. Nobody believes that people like us exist. He's mm. using us like me and him. And so I'm like putting the phone on mute like, what? So he <laughs> ended up funding our second season. That was very helpful. He gave us exactly what we needed okay. to fund the series and more. And it just felt like we were just on the right path. We were creating television. Beyond adding seasons to Awkward Black Girl and supporting more web series, Issa is now being accepted by mainstream Hollywood, as we found out when we visited the talent agency that signed her. A lot of times you write a screenplay and it just sits there on paper and now it's up to the development executives to decide whether or not this is something that's going to resonate and what she's done really well is show that there's a proof of concept in her original ideas which I think has really helped her grow much quicker. And what else is going on in terms of these proof of concepts? She's had a lot of film and TV opportunities circling her. She recently got a development deal over at HBO. And what? we're exploring both, we're exploring, you know, all of the all different right. things simultaneously. Yeah, from YouTube to HBO, that's a good story. I've been a fan of the awkward black girl for a while, but after spending time with show creator Issa Rae, 
I have even more respect for the journey she's taken. She found support in her internet audience and used crowdfunding to extend the life of the show and find financial support from Pharrell Williams. Now she's here overseeing multiple shows, building her own digital media empire. Hollywood said she couldn't do it her way, but she said otherwise. You've described the company as having a quadruple bottom line. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of bottom lines. Yes. <laughs> Could you just walk me through them? Our business is focused around people, purpose, planet, and profit. 